Hello, my name is Richard. I'm the pastor of the King's Church in Addleston in Surrey. And uh, we've just started reading through the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. And um, as you read through that, that book, you kind of get your first impression of God, uh, really. And, and first impressions are important, aren't they? When we, we meet someone for the first time, we, we often, nearly always, if we're honest, make a, a judgment based on those first impressions. And so as we read through this first book of the Bible, I wonder what your first impressions of God are. What is this God like? Who is God? And, and what do we get from these first encounters with him? Um, are there things that surprise you about God as you read these first chapters of the Bible? Are there things you didn't know about God? Are there characteristics about God that go against that, the popular idea of what God might be like? Now, as we saw uh, last time, the, the opening chapter uh, of Scripture just reveals a, a very creative God. Um, he, he sees what he's made and things are good. Um, so we see a God of variety and of diversity, but yet unity. Uh, we see a God who provides and perfectly forms things. We find a God who finishes and completes his work. Um, a God who rests after he's finished his work. A God who's confident that what he has done is complete, it is finished, um, and who's able to stop and rest after that without any fear. You know, he's not, you don't see him scratching his head and worrying and thinking, oh, I wonder if what I've made uh, messes itself up, or uh, I wonder what will happen if creation starts to undo itself. He doesn't seem to worry or fear about those things. He's confident that his creation is good and it's complete. And so God then creates not a thing, but he creates a time. His work of creation is complete. And so he's done all of that in these kind of these distinct uh, days, as we're told, these periods of time where that creative work happens. And then he forms this extra or an, another period of time where no work is done. So there's a time set aside, um, which is different to the preceding six days. And, and that's a time of rest, a day of rest when everything is finished. And seemingly, if I'm honest, it just seems like a bit of an unnecessary time. Why would you need a time to do nothing when actually time is there and activity happens in that? And it seems, if I'm honest, a little bit unexpected that we find that we have a God who works and then who rests. That is a little surprising to me. Particularly in this world that we live in, where everything is so 24-7, um, so busy, continuous, on the go all the time. A world which seems to demand that we keep working, we never quite finish things, there's always more to do, that, 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 there, that there is a God who works but then rests and stops is surprising possibly even challenging. See, we live in a world that pushes us towards being busy all the time, to be productive all the time, to be stimulated all the time. A world that suggests that we need to keep going, we need to keep going to survive. A world that seems to enslave people to, to activity, continual activity. And into this world, God says, I'm just not like that. I'm not like that. In, in a world that has so much for mankind to do and to explore, God creates also a time to rest, a seventh day of rest. He invites his people formed in his likeness to do likewise, to, to rest, to take a time to cease from work, to put things down. We call it Sabbath, to cease, to rest. A rhythm of time that includes work and rest in a seven day week. The idea of rest, regular and often, is actually built in to the design of God's creation. It's how we are designed to be, it's how the world is designed to be. And so that idea that we see right at the beginning of scripture, it kind of, it gets enshrined in, in, in the Ten Commandments, for instance, which come later in the Bible. Um, and and, and it's, it's put there as a, as a command, yeah, yeah, keep the Sabbath. And, and the reason for that is because that's how free people 
are to live. Remember, the scriptures are written to a people who had experienced uh, being enslaved by another nation and being taken into captivity by another nation. And so these scriptures speak to them saying, this is how it is to live as free people. See, slaves, they have to work continuously. They have no choice, but they have to keep working at their master's commands. They have to keep going and keep going and keep going. But free people are not forced to work continually. So God says, take advantage of your freedom. You can rest. Sabbath is a mark of freedom. And the same is true today, as it was then when these scriptures were written. Sabbath, the idea of resting periodically, is a mark of our freedom. But somewhere along the way, as time went on, what was meant for freedom became a burden uh, to people. And that's often the way, sadly, that with, with things that are put in place, they, they, things get corrupted and the idea just gets twisted. And in those days, um, many millennia ago, the, uh, the Sabbath, uh, which was meant for freedom, rules were added. This is how you keep the Sabbath. And then this is how you keep the Sabbath. And you're not allowed to do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. And it became actually something that was really hard to do. It became very restrictive and constraining. And so something that was made and, and for people's good, the idea of resting, became almost this impossible task to perform in not doing all these things. And so along comes Jesus and he reminds people. He says, you know, the Sabbath was made for man. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. It's like we weren't made to just follow rules just for the sake of it. But actually the rules were given to us for our good. And these commands were given to us for our good. We're not created to follow rules, but actually they're, they're for us. And so God has created this time for us to rest for our benefit. And I think that's just a general principle for all of the God's commands. You know, we, we aren't made to simply follow commands, you know, to weigh us down. God hasn't just made us and then thought, right, I'm just going to give them a whole load of stuff to do. That's going to be really difficult just to keep them busy. Far from it. Actually, the commands God gives are for our benefit and for our well-being and for our welfare. That's how we live well as free people. This, that's what the commands are all about. So the Sabbath, this period, periodic rest in the week, was made for our benefit. A rhythm of rest that was for our good. It's, it's built into the way creation works. It's the way of God himself, because God himself isn't a workaholic. He's not a slave driver. He's the one who actually works, does his work, and then he stops. And so I wonder, why is it that so many of us find this so difficult to do, to rest? Why are we so restless? I'm not talking about being lazy or slothful. A lot of, a lot of us find that actually quite easy. But I'm talking about the struggle that we have to cease to stop in our body, in our mind, in our soul. I wonder, is it because we worry uh, that we haven't done enough? Or we worry that what we have done isn't good enough? Or does our mind or is imagine that they're the things that we could be doing and so even when our body is at rest, our mind is still worrying? Or do we worry that the world won't cope without me continually uh, putting something into it? Or are we fearful uh, of being without something to do because we're not very good at just being still um, and we get anxious when we're, we need activity? Uh, or do we worry that we haven't done enough to survive? You know, we need more stuff, so we need to keep working so that we have enough money or we have enough food and we need to keep going, otherwise things are going to fall apart. Or maybe our identity is tied up in being a human doing rather than a human being? Do we feel that pressure to be busy? That seems to be the cultural norm, doesn't it? Oftentimes I ask people, how are you doing? And they say, well, I'm busy. I'm busy. That's, that's supposed to be a good thing, to be busy. Is that there a need to feel that we need to be productive with all of our time? I mean, why do we find it so hard to stop? Rest is surely a good thing. Um, I mean, it is. Sabbath is, is good for us. Um, and so God reveals it's part of who he is 
and how he is and how he's created the world to be. And then Jesus comes and affirms that the Sabbath was made for us and for our benefit. And, and we need to hear that. I mean, it may seem obvious, but we need to hear that this is how God is and this is what God speaks to us and says, this is good for you. We need to hear that because our world uh, seems to drive us in the opposite direction. It seems to push us into activity and busyness and stimulation and just it's all the time. Yet Jesus says, it's good for you to stop. So do it. To Sabbath is good for us. Not only is it good for us, but to to Sabbath is is also a statement. It's a statement to the world around that says that we are free people, not ruled or governed by our 24-7 world that is busy, 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 busy. But we are free of that. It's a statement that says we trust in a God who creates and builds and sustains his creation. And it's him that does the work. And unless he does the work, we're labouring in vain anyway as the Psalms say. To Sabbath is a statement that that we trust in a God of grace who does the work in us and through us. And he is the one who says it's finished and we can rest in him. So Sabbath is good for us, but it's also a statement to the world around us that we have a faith and a belief in a God who is so much more than us. We are free people in him. So, through Jesus, who says that the Sabbath was made for us and that we were not made for the Sabbath, who has given uh, us the blessing of rest, let us learn what it is to work and to rest. Because that's built into the design of the creation that we live in. And when we just continue to keep going, keep going, we're going against the way things have been designed and no wonder people get burnt out and we we have our anxieties and, and just things collapse when we don't do that. Jesus affirms that it's right and it's true to rest. And so the challenge is to accept these words, to lay down our continual striving and our effort and to know the peace that comes in the rest and the Sabbath of God. To be with God and trust God as we stop periodically on our Sabbaths and enjoy being still, to believe in a God who expects us to work but also to rest as he did. And as I finish, just take that thought that God expects us to work. That's maybe the expected part of God, but he also expects us to rest. That may come as a surprise, but that's the God that we worship, that's the God that we follow, that's that's who God is a God of work and of rest. So may you know Sabbath in your life as a regular rhythm for your good and a statement to the world around that we are free people, free in Jesus Christ. Amen.